Okay, in today's video, we're gonna be doing example number two for carbon-14 dating. In this video, we're gonna be using activity. Please don't forget, before we go on here, down here in the bottom right-hand corner, please subscribe to my channel, support my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And while you're at it, leave me a comment in the comment section below down there and let me know what do you think of this video, my channel, any comments, I'm always happy to hear from you. Now, I made a previous video where we did a radiocarbon problem using the number of radioactive nuclei present. In this video, we're going to be using activity. You can link to all my other videos, not all my other videos, but some of my other videos for radioactivity by clicking on that little eye right there in the upper right-hand corner. But in the year... 1991, the well-preserved mummy of a man was discovered in the Otsatal Alps in Italy. That would be northern Italy or the southern Alps. And a sample was taken from Otsi. So he was discovered in this area, these Alps, and there his nickname was Otsi. It was determined that the carbon-14 decay activity was 53% of what it would be in a living organism. And we want to figure out when he died. Because look at that. He looks like he's died. Looks like he's there. He's coming out of the ice there. And we're going to figure out how long ago did he die. We're going to do that using radiocarbon or carbon-14 dating. But we need one of the pieces of information. And that one of the pieces of information is that one gram of carbon from a living material contains 5.02 times 10 to the 10 atoms of carbon. Remember, there are three naturally occurring isotopes of carbon. Carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14. Carbon-12 and carbon-13 are stable. The stable isotopes carbon-14 is radioactive and it will decay through beta decay to nitrogen-14 and we can use that idea and the half-life of carbon, which we'll talk about in a moment, to determine when Otzi died. And we're going to use this equation to solve for the time when he died. And that's this T right here. So we need to solve this equation for T. Now, we don't know too much yet, but we're going to figure all this stuff out. We know that we can figure out A0, the activity associated with this number, the original number of carbon-14 atoms. We know that AT, the activity at this time later, was 53% of this. This is Euler's number. It's kind of a constant, 2.718, I believe. And this is the decay constant, which we're going to solve for in a moment because it's E raised to the power, the negative power of the decay constant times T. And once again, we're solving for T. Now, we know we have this number of radioactive nuclei originally, and we need to figure out the activity that is associated with this number of radioactive nuclei. Okay, and we can use this equation to solve for A0. A0, the original activity, is equal to the K constant times N0, which is the number of radioactive nuclei that are present. So on the next slide, we're going to use this equation and solve for A0. But... First of all, we have to figure out what the decay constant is for carbon-14. And this is the equation that we use to solve for the decay constant. It's simply the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life. And remember, the half-life of carbon is 5,730 years. Now, we're going to be using activity. Activity is expressed in decays per second. So we need to convert the half-life from 5,000 730 years into seconds, and we do that by taking the number of years, multiplying by the number of days, the number of hours, the number of minutes, the number of seconds, and we get that 5,730 years is 1.81 times 10 to the 11th seconds. We can plug that into here, the natural log of 2, divided by the number of seconds, and we get that to the K constant for carbon-14, because everything has a different half-life, but for carbon-14 is 3.84 times 10 to the minus 12 s seconds to the minus 1. Because we have our seconds down here in the denominator, we can write s to the minus 1, 1, which is the way you most commonly see it, but you could also write 1 over s. Okay, so now we can solve for the original activity. The original activity is simply the decay constant times the number of radioactive nuclei present. That's 3.84 times 10 to the minus 12, that's our decay constant. We originally start off with 5.02 times 10 to the 10 atoms of carbon-14, and we get that the original activity for this number of carbon-14 atoms is 0.193 becquerels, okay? 
Now in the next slide, we're going to use this equation because now we know A0. We know that AT is 53% of A0. We did figured out the decay constant, which is right here, and we're going to solve for this T. So let's do that on this page right here. And first, we're going to figure out AT, which is just 53% of A0. So we just take A0 times 0 0.53. 1 point, 0 0.193 times 0 0.53, and that gives us that the activity at time t is 0 0.10229 becquerels. And I'm going to place that right up there like that. So now I have a0 and a t, and we know the decay constant from the previous slide, so we can now solve this equation for t. And the first thing we're going to do to do that is we're going to divide both sides of the equation by a0. So we have AT divided by A0 on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we just have the, the Euler's number, E raised to the power of minus the decay constant times T. Now, we want to solve for this T once again, which means we got to get rid of this E. And we can get rid of this E by multiplying both sides of the equation, or taking the natural log of both sides of the equation, the left-hand side is the natural log of AT divided by A0. And you have to remember that, or the reason we did this is because the natural log of E raised to any power is just that power. So on the right-hand side, we just have minus the decay constant times T. Now we can solve for T because I can just divide both sides of the equation by negative decay constant, and I get that T, the time that we're looking for, is equal to the natural log of AT divided by A0 divided by minus the decay constant. Don't forget the minus sign because this is minus, this is negative, this is going to turn out to be, this is going to turn out to be negative, this is negative, and then the time will be positive. We can plug the values in. That's the natural log of 0 0.102 divided by 0 0.193. You have to find this value first, then take the natural log, and then divide that by the negative of the decay constant, which we found on the previous slides. And then we get, I think I have like an intermediate step here. When you take the natural log of this fraction, you get minus 0 0.639. Divide that by the decay constant, negative divided by negative, to e is equal to a positive, and you get that that's 1.65 times 10 to the 11 seconds. Now we could leave it like that, but since we're dealing with carbon-14 dating, in years, really, we want to convert this number of seconds into a number of years. And that number of seconds is equal to 5,242 years. So as of one, one, well, as of 1991, Otzi had died 5,242 years ago. Now let's figure out when he died a little bit more accurately, how he might actually refer to it, and we can do that right here because we know that as of 1991, he died this many years ago, so we can subtract 1991 or 1,991 years from that. That's when he was found. And that means that he died in the year 3,251 BCE, before the Common Era, okay? So that's how you do that. We use the activity to determine when Otzi died. Now let's just take another quick look at him. There we go. He doesn't look so bad for a guy who's 5,242 years old as of 1991. And then they made a little recreation of him. That's what they think he looked like. I can't remember how tall they think he is, but maybe like four and a half feet or something like that. But looks like a pretty handsome guy there. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please, hopefully you did, please do all the following four things, as I said before. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Please leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, that's right, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.